Pastor Joe here again. It's Tuesday with our regular weekly e-blast. Just wanted to tell you a few things uh, going on. One is that uh, church is, was exciting this last week. For those who attended our worship service, you uh, hopefully sensed the presence of the Lord there. And it was a great time of ministry as we shared the truth. If you weren't in the service or you haven't watched the live stream yet, remember you can go back on Facebook or YouTube channel and see these services and uh, you'll catch what, what's going on. Let me fix my camera a little bit there. But you'll see what's going on uh, actually in the service itself, but at about 70 to 75% of our attendance is, is still back. We're still missing some folks that are not come back for various reasons that aren't back in church yet, but a vaccine's about to come out, and I know there's controversy on that, but we'll see how many folks will come back once we have some curative measures in place and some vaccines, preventive measures in place. So uh, looking forward to a full restoration of all our churches we get into latter part of this year and next year. So I'm excited about what God's going to do. I hope you are as well. Uh, I just want to give you a word of encouragement. This is from John 14. Jesus is uh, encouraging his disciples, and he said, listen, uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, and he's talking about the fact, if you go into John 14, that the day is coming, we'll all be together. But the principle is true at all times in every situation we may be going through. We believe God and we believe in Jesus. Um, isn't it interesting? We will believe the Lord for salvation. We believe the Lord as we pray our prayers. But sometimes when we go through the difficulties and the crisis and the pandemics and the critical financial issues and sorrows and losses in our own life, that we have a tendency to not really trust the Lord. We move into worry mode and we move into stress mode. My word of encouragement to you is, is to trust the word of God when he says, believe in Jesus, believe him. He's there, he's present, he's navigating, he's directing your life. Even though you may not see the course in which it's necessarily going, you're going to, have to trust the Lord. Job is a tremendous Old Testament example of that. We know how he went through severe problems and crisis and loss of his family and his finances and uh, he was had physical diseases, emotional issues, spiritual issues, but he wouldn't he wouldn't reject God. He kept trusting the Lord. Uh, uh, you know, we all get in those times where you just want to question why and and what the purpose is. And we here's the thing about it: faith means I don't have to always understand why or the purposes. I just know that God is faithful to His promises and He's faithful to me. God, God did not answer Job's request to really know why. We had his friends chime in, but he didn't always. He didn't know the, the where it was headed. He didn't see that God was getting ready to bless his life in, in spectacular ways and in incredible ways with an outpouring of blessings upon his life. He saw his present situation, but we must keep our eyes on the Lord because God was going to do something. And perhaps if God had told him what he was doing, it probably would have thwarted the whole thing of, of why God was working in his life the way that God was working in his life. Because God's working much deeper purposes in our life to strip away the old selfishness and the old flesh and to bring us to a place of maturity in our walk in life. Uh, remember the disciples were walking along with Jesus one day and they came across a man that was born blind and Peter asked and the disciples wanted to know uh, who's, whose fault is this? Why is this man born this way? Or was it sin in his life or was it his parents' sin? I mean, who did this? And Jesus told him, none of that, not for his parents' sin, not for his son. He was born this way that God might be glorified. In other words, he was born that way that in that very moment, in time in history, he would experience the grace and the power of God in his life in a very real way that Jesus Christ's ministry would once again be validated uh, through another miracle, a sign that he was the Messiah. I mean, God was working in supernatural and big ways in this man born blind, begging by the side of the road. And here's Jesus who steps on and says, this happened for the glory of God. I think we need to bring our situations into that same uh, kind of arena that we, we're trusting the Lord that his will is going to be carried out and that he will be glorified, and I will receive a blessing from it. Out of that is God's going to do something in my life because as the Scripture says it's not painful for the moment. We know that afterwards there's a fruit, there's glory, there's blessings of God in our life. So take comfort in these words. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Put your faith in Jesus today. Trust in him today. Rest in him today. And if there's not this, if there's not this storm that's brewing or this crisis is going on in your life right now, they will be coming sooner or later. They always do. But yes, you can ask the Lord why and you can seek the Lord's direction. But in the midst of all that, you got to trust the Lord. Believe in Jesus. Believe in him. Believe in him that he's answering your prayer. Believe that he's hearing your voice. Believe most of all that he's present and he will be glorified in your life. That's all I have for you today. God bless you. Hope you have a glorious day.